Hello. Today I'm going to talk about probability distributions for discrete random variables. As shown in the syllabus. A random variable is a variable whose value is determined by the outcome of a random experiment. Random variables can either be discrete or continuous. Discrete meaning they can take on only certain values. Random means the outcome depends on chance. Discrete random variable is usually denoted with a capital letter, for example x. Um, for example, if x is the number on a fair dice, x can either take on the values 1 to 6. And the probability that the number, for example, is a 2, is written as p bracket x equals 2, as shown at the bottom. Other examples of discrete random variables are, for, for example, the number of cracked eggs in a purchase of 10. So x could take on the values 0 through 10. Or x could be the score when two die are rolled. x could take on the values from 2 to 12. Or the number of sixes obtained when five dice are rolled. So x could take on the values of 0 through 5. A discrete probability distribution is a table, usually, but sometimes a formula or even a graph that gives all the possible values of that random variable along with the associated probabilities. So a probability distribution is similar to a frequency distribution, except that it shows probabilities instead of frequencies. For example, if x is the discrete random variable, the number of heads obtained when two coins are tossed. As shown in the tree diagram here. So you can see the four different outcomes head head, head tail, tail head, and tail tail, and the associated probabilities. So in the top outcome, x is 2, both coins show the head. In both of these branches, one head was obtained, so that's x is equal to 1, and in the bottom branch, no heads were obtained, just two tails, so x is equal to 0. So overall, the possible values of x are 0, 1 and 2, and the probabilities are respectively a quarter and a half and a quarter. A quarter, um, sorry, a half, remembering that the x is 1, you have to add these two probabilities in the middle. So the probability distribution uh, was a table, of that example looks like this. Notice also if you add the probabilities, a quarter plus a half plus a quarter, the sum is equal to one. Okay, this fact is written mathematically using the Greek letter sigma shown here. So the standing for sum. The sum of all the probabilities is equal to one. Remember also that each individual probability must lie between zero and one. If all the possible values of a random variable x have the same chance or probability, then that distribution is called a uniform probability distribution. For example, when a die is rolled, if x is the score on the die, each of the values of x, 1 through 6, has the same chance, 1 in 6. Okay, so this is an example of a uniform probability distribution. In this question, the probability distribution is defined by the function given, and we're asked to find the probability distribution, in other words, the table. So to do this, all we need to do is substitute the values of x into the given function. So substituting 3 in would be 3 take away 2 is 1, so that would be equal to 1 15th. And the next one, using x equals 4, so 4 take away 2 is 2, so that would be 2 fifteenths, and so on. So this is the probability distribution.
we can actually make use of the table function on your calculator to do those calculations. So I'll just show you how we can do that. On your calculator, have you press menu if you pick the table option, that's option seven, and then delete any function that's already in there by pressing F2, delete, and F1 to confirm. Oops, sorry, do that again on the right line, F2 and F1. And then type in the given function. So that's how press the fraction button, so this is a fraction, put in X, take away two, Goes it down and into the 15. I've shown you the diagram there. Then, if you press F5 to set the table and set a start value of 3, the first value of x, and an end value of 7, the last value of x, and step 1, the increment. shown. If you enter those, finally if you press F6, table, the probabilities will just be displayed in the Y1 column. Note, however, that they're given as decimals, not as fractions. In this question, again, we're asked to find the probability distribution of x, the number of red socks removed. So if we start by drawing a tree diagram and showing the outcomes and the associated probabilities. And if we define x as the number of red socks, we notice that x can either equal 0, 1 or 2 again x equaling 0 corresponded to the outcome of two black socks. x equaling 1 corresponding to either a red and a black or a black and a red. So again, remember to add those two probabilities. And x equals 2 corresponding to taking two red socks. So as shown, x can have the values 0, 1 or 2. And the probability distribution is shown here. In this question, the table shows the probability distribution of y, the number of cracks observed in a one kilometer length of sewer pipe, and we're asked to find the value of k. So we need to use the fact that the sum of the probabilities always add up to one. So we can write an equation involving k and then solve it. As you can see, k is equal to 0 0.1. In part b, to find the probability that y is less than or equal to 1, we note that y can either then be 0 or 1. And we simply add those two probabilities, given an answer of 0 0.75, as shown. In part c, we're asked to find the probability that y is equal to 0, given that we know y is less than or equal to 1. So if you remember, this is a conditional probability question. This means that the probability distribution is reduced from the 100% down to 75%, or 0 0.75 as shown. And the, and the probability that y is equal to 0, given that y is less than or equal to 1, is equal to 0 0.45 out of 0.75 and that's equal to 0 0.6. In this last question again we're asked to construct the probability distribution. A fair cubical die and a fair tetrahedral die are rolled so we could start by drawing a sample space diagram. as shown here. So we can see that S, the sum of the scores on the die, die can have values from 2 to 10. And the probability distribution is shown below. 
Finally, to construct a bar chart, we note again that S can have values 2 to 10. So on the x-axis, we'll have values 2 to 10. And on the y-axis, we will show the probabilities, as shown in the diagram here. You will notice that the bar chart is symmetrical. And this is an example of a symmetrical probability distribution. To find the probability that S is bigger than 2, we simply add all those probabilities. Or alternatively, we can use our complement rule. So the probability that S is bigger than 2 is found by subtracting 1 24th from 1 whole. And that gives 23 24ths. To find the probability that S is at most 6, we simply add the respective probabilities. And that's equal to 7 twelfths.